Hi, I'm Lucas Nunes, and I'm here today to show you a way to learn semantic information from LiDAR data without the effort of labeling it. In the context of dynamic outdoor environment, the robot needs to understand its surroundings. Especially in autonomous driving, commonly different sensors such as cameras and LiDARs are employed to extract a better understanding of the surroundings. In this context, the scenario can change quickly, and since the car drives at a relatively high speed, the semantics in understanding is even more critical. Nowadays, learning-based methods play a main role in perception. For such systems, large amounts of data are essential. Here, the challenge does not rely much on the amount of data, but on the labeling of this data. Once a data collection platform is set, one can drive around collecting data in different places, at different times, and in different weather conditions. But without the labels, it's hard to grasp any information from it. In this work, we propose a representational learning method to extract temporal consistent structural information from the scene without requiring any label. From the LiDAR data, we extract views of the same object at different points in time in an unsupervised manner, and then train the model to extract a representation from this object, which is consistent across the same object seen from different perspectives. After training a model with our approach, it can be fine-tuned to different downstream tasks, improving the model performance, especially when few annotated data are available. In our approach, we start by extracting temporal views of the object seen at different points in time. We first aggregate a set of N scans in a common coordinate frame, which can be done by registering the point clouds and getting their relative transformations. During the aggregation, we maintain the index information to later retrieve the individual scans from the aggregated point cloud. Next, we want to divide the scene into segments that do correspond to the objects in this scenario. If you look at an outdoor scene, the main connection between the objects is the ground. If you look only to the non-ground points, we can see that the objects in the scene are disconnected from each other. Therefore, we employ a non-supervised method for ground segmentation and apply it over each individual scan, aggregating both the point clouds and its ground predictions. If we ignore the ground predictions in green, all the gray regions are individual objects or structures with different semantic information, which are relatively distant from each other. Therefore, by applying a cluster algorithm, we can divide those gray regions into core segments of the objects in the scene. And since we kept the mapping from each individual scan in the aggregated point cloud, we can extract the object's representations at each individual scan. With this preprocessing, we can easily map how each object in the scene was seen at different points in time, for both static and for dynamic objects, such as the walking pedestrian in this case. Once we have the object's temporal views, we can train the network to learn a representation consistent with the object's representations viewed from different perspectives. We sample two random scans from the aggregated point cloud and extract pointwise features from them. Then we use the temporal views mapping to pull the segment's pointwise features from both sampled scans. That way, we have the features extracted from each segment from a scan and their corresponding pair in the other scan. Here we can see how much each object changes when seen by the, the, the LiDAR from different perspectives. With these views, we do not only rely on random data augmentation, but also on this natural data augmentation related to the LiDAR point of view. We can then define the training as a discriminative task. The network needs to learn to extract similar features for the same object viewed from different perspectives and is similar from other objects. We formulate this discriminative task as an implicit clustering scheme. Since we aim at the fine-grained pointwise representation, we want all the points from the same segment to be similar to each other and apart from the other segment's points. Given the two views of the objects, for one of them we use a two-layer transformer encoder as a projector to compute pointwise features, while for the other view we apply average pooling to extract a target mean representation for that object and use a one-layer transformer encoder as a projector. With the pointwise features from one view and the mean target representation from the other, we compute the loss to maximize the similarity between each point and its corresponding mean representation and minimize the similarity with all the other segments. Through the loss, we then put all the points closer to a target representation and repel it from the others, aiming to achieve clusters of segments where all the points from the same segment viewed at different points in time are still consistent. In that way, we train the model to learn correspondence within the different objects in the scene without any labels. In our experiments, we tested our approach by fine-tuning it to different downstream tasks. For semantic segmentation, our method achieved the best performance between the previous state-of-the-art methods in all the subsets of labels used for fine-tuning. What's interesting is that with only 10% of the annotated data, 
we could surpass the results of the network trained from scratch with all the labels. For panoptic segmentation, we again could surpass the model trained from scratch with all the labels, but in this case requiring only half of the annotated data, and it still achieved the best performance compared to the previous state-of-the-art methods. We also evaluated our model in the transfer learning setup, where we pretend on semantic kitty and finally tune it to new scenes. In this case, we also compared the results with the model supervisor pre-trained on semantic kitty. For semantic segmentation, apart from achieving better performance than previous state-of-the-art methods, our method achieved better performance than the supervisor pre-training, both on mini and full training sets from new scenes. Even though we use no labels, our pre-training could surpass the results of the model pre-trained using labels. For panoptic segmentation, our method again surpassed the previous state-of-the-art methods and also achieved better performance than the supervised pre-training, especially in the mini-training set, where there is a clear performance gap. These results suggest that our pre-training could be used in the wild with raw collected data and would still be a better pre-training than taking the effort to label the data beforehand. Here in this video, we can compare the results of the model trained from scratch with all the labels, and the same model pre-trained our approach and finally tuned using only 10% of the annotated data. With our pre-training, the model could achieve the same performance as the model trained with all the labels, even though using only one-tenth of the data, showing that our method could learn a data representation that could be later be exploited to improve the results of the model when fine-tuning to the target downstream task. In summary, in this paper, I propose a new representation learning method for LiDAR data. Our method exploits the LiDAR data characteristics to extract distinctive views of the same object viewed at different points in time to learn a temporal consistent representation. Before pre-training, we could boost the model performance during fine-tuning, requiring only one-tenth of the annotated data to surpass the results of the network training from scratch with all the labels, when fine-tuning to semantic segmentation. Our experiments also suggest that our method is better suited for transfer learning than supervised pre-training, suggesting that our method could be used in the wild for pre-training on raw LiDAR data without the effort of labeling the data beforehand, and it still achieve a better performance than pre-training on it using the labels. Furthermore, we have made our code publicly available, and you can find it on Git through this QR code, and we invite you to check our paper and try out our method. Thanks.